<laughs> Hello, my name is Allison. I'd like to share with you the most amazing deck. Hello, my name is Joellen Black. These slides have lots of tips that you can really use. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much these slides will help your work. You can put down your coffee now and listen as we give you ways to make your project sing. A helpful guide. With lots of slides. It's super fun. You in? This music and some visuals will show you how it's done. You in? That's great. Let's get things started then. You simply won't believe how much this deck will, will change your life. This deck will change your life. These slides will change your life. Managing projects. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Project Management the Musical. I'm Joe, and we're here to talk about how we at Palantir run a project from start to finish. Now, all great musicals tell a story of some sort of journey. Sometimes it's a love story, but almost always there's a little part of an adversity or some kind of trial or tribulation to get through. Musicals just simply include songs to help move the plot along and help keep it interesting. So we're going to give that overview of how we like to run a project. Um, the steps we take, how we work with clients, and how we overcome the odds to make fantastic websites that our clients love. It's going to be informative and at times very musical. In your playbills, you're going to find a couple of sheets to fill out, or excuse me, a sheet to fill out uh, with the names of the musicals that you hear. If you're able to name all of them, we'll put you into a raffle for a chance to win a $25 gift card. <coughs> Having a slight knowledge of Broadway musicals is helpful, though not required for the show. We'll give you enough prompts that you know at least to know when to laugh. Sometimes you're going to ask me sing, and we have our Twitter handles and the hashtag PM the Musical at the bottom of all of our slides, so that way you can help us tell the critics what you think of the show. And with that, let's begin. Let's start at the very beginning. What else did you think we'd start with? I mean, come on. <laughs> right? A very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When we work, we begin with contracting. Contracting. The first real task just happens to be contracting. Don't we all love contracting? No? Yes? <laughs> So this is Allison. She's going to be the heroine of this story. Think of her as Julie Andrews in every story that you love as a child, except for instead of having a guitar, she's got a scrum board. And instead of feeding the birds tuppence a pound, she's got a couple of different sprint points that she's going to be dealing with. Now, as we talked about, the first phase that we talk about in this project is um, talking through contracting. Um, so, uh, excuse me. In this story, our, <laughs> our heroine has just been assigned a new, a new uh, project. So what is the first phase that we're going to be talking about? I just totally flubbed it. Contracting. There you go. <laughs> so that's right. Contracting. Before she does anything else, Allison needs to really understand the contract for this project. If she misses something here, she's either going to have a costly problem, or she's going to look like a fool for months in front of her client. So she's got to be very explicit with the contract. So let's all get together and list out the needs that are in your statement of work. Scope. You must spell out the scope. Cost. Cost. Define the payment terms. Dates. Your unavailable. Clear deliverables list. Clarity on exclusions. Signatures from higher up. You need to know your contract before you can begin anything else as a project manager. There's a couple of key pieces, depending on how your statement of work is written, that you really want to pay attention to first. One of the key ones is your deliverables. What, at the end of the day, do you need to make sure that your project has, uh, and what are you expected to deliver? You want to know what is the overall scope, what is the totality that you're working in. Exclusions. As important as knowing what is in, you need to know what's out. What are the things that you don't have to deal with to make this a successful project? 
Assumptions are another very key part. As a sales process happened, or as many different conversations have happened, there's been assumptions that have been built into your contract. You want to make sure you know what those are. If one of those happens to not be the case anymore, of course, you want to figure out what is the next step to fix that. Scheduling is also very important. Does your client have an expectation of when this is going to be done? Is there going to be any times that people have vacations or your company might have a retreat of some kind? And then, of course, we all like to eat dinner at the end of the day, so make sure you know what are the payment terms. Do you have any specific milestones that you hit? Is this a monthly project? Um, but as important as knowing everything else, you need to know what those payment terms are. So once Allison's had that opportunity to really understand the contract, she now needs to get organized. So the start of a project is where the PM is probably at her busiest. It's like starting a quest. Think of Lord of the Wings, Fellowship of the Drupal. I, I mixed in way too many terrible metaphors at one time, right? Uh, she has to determine how to work with the client team, her internal team. And the goal is to create an atmosphere of transparency and collaboration throughout it all. For our toolkit that we use at Palantir, we use Jira. Previously, we had used Redmine. And our goal with that is to really see what are all the different pieces of the project and how they're going to come together. We also very early on established what we like to call a risk log, which is a detailed list of all the different things that might go wrong, and if they do go wrong, how severe is that problem, and then how do we mitigate that if it comes through. At the end, we'll have a link where you can download one of these as an example if you're interested. Along with this, you want to make sure you have proper time tracking tools in place so you can see how your team is working. Are they meeting your estimates? Are they having any problems? And then if there's any kind of contractual obligations on hours, of course, time tracking is very important. You also want to make sure that there's great communication tools in place. Do you have a great way that you're going to be talking with your product owner? Uh, does your team have patterns of different types of email lists or anything of that nature? Make sure that those are established early on and when Allison's in this organizing project part, this is really the time to be doing that. We also love Google folders. It's a really great way to be able to put all your deliverables out there, your notes documents, organize them nicely, and make sure that it's easy for your client to have access and easy for your team to get access. So now that Allison's been organized, she now starts to assemble the team together, and uh, she has a couple of different conversations she wants to have with team members. You want to see who's in charge of the overall vision of the project. In some cases, it might be her as a project manager, it might be somebody else on the team. You want to see who's in charge of the user stories, who's going to write them, who's going to manage your backlog, uh, who's going to create the sprint schedules, and who's going to have your demos and releases. Uh, but the first one of the big things that she needs to be doing is getting her team on the same page prior to a kickoff by asking a couple of quick questions. So for this project, Alice is working on an end-to-end -end project that's a higher ed client. There's going to be six team members total. And uh, our PM knows that she has a break in the schedule to account for a large conference that she and the client are attending, or rather the client is attending. And she knows one of her engineers is going to be going on a well-deserved vacation. And now that our heroine has gotten all of her ducks in a row, we've planned out lots of things, we have a communication in, plan, in place, um, and she's now prepared for all the work that's to come. There's a schedule for feds and designers. I've got dashboards set up for my client. My spreadsheets are fly, and they're on Google Drive. <laughs> And I'm told the deposit check finally arrived. Oh, what an organized project. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. This project will be okay. <laughs> and of course, when you're kicking off your project, you got to make sure your chat is good. So the contract's been signed, the team has been organized, and Allison's gotten everything organized to start. Now it's time to, for the client team and the internal project team to be meeting formally for a kickoff to the project. She knows she has to get everybody together for a few days to accomplish a lot, and there's a lot to cover during this time. So our P PM's workload is gonna be pretty full during this kickoff. There's many different purposes that go into a kickoff. You want to make sure that you define your goals, that you have an understanding of consensus building, what you're going to do if there's any problems. You want to make sure that you're listening and learning to your clients to understand what their goals are and how you can help them. Um, and you're empowering the right people. You want to continue identifying those risks. And you want to make sure that you're collaborating. But the really overall goal that you want to do is make sure that you're establishing trust and a relationship with your client that's going to continue through this entire project. 
The first step that we're going to be looking at is how you're going to set your agenda. This is where Allison, as the PM, is really going to be stepping through and helping the team determine what meetings they need, making sure that you're able to get the right stakeholders in place, you're solidifying all those travel plans, you're planning exercises so that you can figure out what the client needs and how you can best help, and then depending on your schedule, maybe figuring out a time for dinner and possibly drinks with your client. Um, again, we have an example here of our, one of our on-site agendas, which as you can see can sometimes get a bit hairy. We have an example that you can dial in at the end of this. Um, these things can get very detailed, um, but you start with an overall schedule and just begin to break it down. But again, the bottom line is really just making sure that you get to know your client. So exercises when we're going through our, our kickoff meetings is doing an empathy mapping that Allison talked about in her song, or rather saying about in her song, uh, where you, as with your client team and with your internal project team, you try to put yourself in the place of your uh, end users. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are they doing? Try to think of the different points of friction that they have in their process, uh, what they might be dealing with as they work with your site. The goal is really to make sure that you're getting in the heads of your users. And as a PM, Allison is going to be making sure that this process is able to be cataloged and understood across the board by everybody on the project team. She might also be leading an information architecture workshop. We're figuring out which words might make the best sense with your menus and labels, how you might set up your site map, that type of thing. But before it's all done, we need to make sure that we have a nice wrap-up session, uh, figuring out what is the highest value pieces that we have in this project. Uh, we need to make sure that there's a clear understanding of what's in and what's out, or at least how we're going to determine that moving forward. And then one question that we really always like to ask is, what's the number one thing that Palantir needs to get right? And if we have a good answer to that, we know that we can go forward and make sure the project's right. So once we've moved through this kickoff process, unfortunately, we run into a little bit of a problem. Everybody is, everything's running smoothly, and someone takes that aforementioned vacation. So all those carefully laid out plans, now we, need to accomplish, now we need to accommodate a little bit of a change. <coughs> You're going to Argentina. I'll have to make some adjustments throughout the process. With my persistence, we'll meet our deadlines despite your distance. <laughs> We then move into what we like to call our strategy and discovery phase, where the team is really starting to dig into the project more, understanding what this is ultimately going to be. And our PM's job at this stage is keeping everybody moving and removing any blockers that happen to come up. Some of the different tasks that our team members might be taking on, we might have to be auditing content, we might be working on different elements of content strategy, digging into our Google Analytics, seeing what our users are doing, what they're not doing, how they're getting there. Um, and we also might be laying some foundational development work, um, determining what our build spec might happen to be, which is a document that lays out all of our content types, what are the different fields, and how they interact with each other. Um, Allison's job during this as a PM is helping the team gather data, um, helping them analyze that feedback from the client, keeping everybody organized, making sure that there's no blockers, and keeping everyone moving along throughout the process. She might also be helping determine some uh, key performance indicators. Again, we're, we're working with a higher education client, so some of the things we might be looking at is how we can help people applying online, uh, signing up for campus tours, filling out financial aid forms. Um, it's important at the beginning of a project that we understand what success at the end of the project is going to be. And so Allison, want, Allison is going to want to make sure that she has clearly established KPIs and a clear understanding, and she's in a good spot to measure, measure the project. In bounces, in 
grand or type of device. 
Our PM has a couple of different tasks that she's going to be doing. Um, she's going to be managing daily scrums, 15-minute uh, meetings where the team has a check-in. Those demos we talked about, she's going to be the one that's running point on those, making sure those are scheduled and set up. And then talking with the client throughout the entire process so that he or she understands what's happening and can really feel that he or she can have an impact. And have the support necessary to go, go, go forward. You know, Joe, this job could be systematic. <laughs> Automatic, rarely bureaucratic. Let's start sprinting. We're sprinting. Go, 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 go. Zero stories are being finished one by one. We're sprinting, yes, we're sprinting. Until all work is done. We're sprinting, yes, we're sprinting. Project team, uh -huh. it's going clean. Uh -huh. Our client during all of this is helping us set the acceptance criteria to this. They're prioritizing the value. They're performing some internal demos and really managing stakeholders on their internal team. And they're participating in all of our daily meetings if they want to. But as the process keeps going on, we're going to have a problem that's notoriously going to come up. It's our next villain in this grand rock opera, and that's scope creep. The client is going to try to perhaps pack a little bit too much into this overall project and, and what the overall budget has. And this is where our PM and our technical lead need to be on their toes. Remember all that prep Allison did at the very beginning? You know, it was a really good place to start. Um, and we talked about what is in and what is out of the project. Allison needs to be relying back on this to make sure that everybody's moving forward and we're getting everything that we need on here. Um, she's going to refer to our SOW. She's going to refer to our budget. And she can also refer to that internal strategy work we did at the beginning to keep the process going. But sometimes, really, you have to have that conversation where you just ask your client maybe to just maybe let it go. expectations across our stakeholders, internal and external. We're looking toward perhaps support or account management, how we continue this relationship on. Uh, but Allison's got to keep on top of these final sprints and manage the client's expectation and make sure that functionality does what it needs to be doing. But one of her key engineers has gotten ill in this dramatic heartbreak. Now our heroine has to manage to how to have fewer points in the sprint and do some shuffling. <laughs> something to show high and loud, high above the pride.
as a project manager that she needs to be managing. And that's our retrospective. During this, she has three key questions that she needs to be asking of each of her team members. What went well? What could be improved? And how does this inform the next project? Really, the goal is making sure that as we move into our next project, we get some really great lessons learned. We can improve that for both our client teams and our internal teams. Really, as we go through these meetings, the, the whole goal is making sure that we jog everyone's memories. <laughs> Memory, all alone in my office, I can smile at the old days when we worked as a team. inside sales pipeline is a little bit less expensive to develop. And since you have the context in place and you really know the client and they know you, you can make this a little bit easier process the next time around. So being able to support over to your, being able to transition over to your support team can be really key. And there's also a little bit of a pride factor in knowing that they're going to come back to you. But just as you have to keep in touch with your client, it's never goodbye. We started with hello, and so we're going to end with <laughs> Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all this time you'd like to me to hire us again. I hear you've got a Drupal 6 site and now it's unsupported.